and the mega scandal, the mega scandal with Cahill and the plas plasma gasification plant, where four ministers went off on a frolic of their own and sold out Barbados for $700 million. Look, they got more scandals. I had to stop, otherwise I would use up all my time listing scandals. But the point is not the scandals. What do all of those scandals have in common? There is one common thread running through all of those scandals. I can't hear you. Dennis Lowe. Eric Seeley once said, even a fool on a mule in the middle of the street could see that. Everybody in Barbados could see that at the center of almost every single scandal in Barbados is one minister. But Frendel can't see it. He can't see it. Look, the budget this year was the most eagerly anticipated budget in recent times. Everybody wanted to hear what had to be said. The Minister of Finance unloaded a budget on the people of Barbados that raised $200 million more on the backs of people already burdened by taxes. And then Mia did her response. Mia's response was perhaps the most masterful response I have ever heard to a budget. She pointed out all the incidences of corruption, of malfeasance, of lack of transparency by the government of Barbados. She offloaded on Dennis Lowe because he deserved it. She offloaded on him. You all know that people actually call him the Archbishop of Corruption. I am not saying he is. I am telling you all that I know that people call him that and ask him whether you know it too. Everyone, after me spoke, everybody was waiting for one thing. They wanted to hear what Dennis Lowe had to say in his own defense. Nobody didn't care about Richard Seeley. Nobody didn't care about anything. Everybody wanted to hear what Dennis Lowe had to say. Dennis Lowe started out by telling everybody that he grew up and nobody didn't love him. Only two people in the whole wide world love him. Himself and his mother. But if it was me, if it was me, and only two people love me, I would not tell a fella. I would keep that to myself. But Dennis, tell the people why nobody at school didn't want to play with you. I know that. I know that. But you all realize, like, Lowe is still the Minister of Water because every time he's under pressure, the tap just turn on. The man has unleashed the tears. He pulled him. Listen, when he was responding, only two people they care about me. And then he paused. The man paused and he swallowed. No, I have never seen more foolishness. More foolishness. And then Dennis Lowe decided that the best defense he had to all of the alleged scandal, all of the lack of transparency, all of the fundamental issues outlined by Mia, his best response is to present his doctoral certificate. The man finally, after many, many years, eight years, decided that was the time to present his doctoral certificate. And worse yet, then he started to question the legitimacy of Mia and her practicing. Who is the... Oh, sorry, one second. Sorry, 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 sorry. One second, one second. Shoot, boy. But this is low. Hello? What? But Dennis, you really call me to talk about a certificate? But you obviously listen to what's going on, Dennis. A certificate? Dennis, nobody care about a certificate no more? Look, tell you what, I get to, hold on, Pat, we can put aside 15 minutes for Dennis. Listen, look, if you come up here and say what you have to say. The people want to hear you. Come and say what you have to say. And Dennis, do not call me back about any certificate. Nobody care about that. And listen, and when you're driving behind the garbage truck, don't drive too close to my miss and throw in. And don't call me back, man. But, oh, man.
as a clone. You re listen. That whole certificate thing is a distraction. That's a, look, let me done with that. If any of y'all want certificates, I can print them for you. I printed one for myself last week and I gave it to myself. But you know what? We done with that. Nobody in care about the certificates. Dennis Lowe's doctoral certificate, the least of his problems and the least of ours is whether or not he got a certificate. People talk about his certificate before he started to drive around the trans tech car. People talk about his certificate before he sent home all the NCC and drainage workers. People talk about his certificate before that Cahill deal when he sold out Barbados for $700 million. People talk about that certificate when they thought he was a petty criminal and before he became an international gangster. Listen, I speak in generally. Generally, I'm not defaming anybody. When a man starts out snatching purses and robbing tourists and then graduates from there so that the whole depravity of the man becomes apparent, when, he, when no crime is too big, Nobody don't talk about how he started out in crime. No, I am not pointing a finger at anybody. I am saying generally. So we don't want to hear about little things. We want to hear about the big things. Dennis Law, I tell you all this now, Dennis Law is a sanctimonious gangster. A man who pulls a gun on an unarmed man is a criminal. He is a criminal. People do seven to 10 years in jail for that. I am not defaming the man. I was there on the 23rd of December last year, and I, Wilfred Arthur Abrams, with my own two eyes in the presence of 13 other people, saw him pull a gun on an unarmed man because the man cursed him after he cursed the man first. He needs to be locked up. The man is a bandit. The only thing he's missing is a ski mask. But you know what? You know, I, I, you know, I didn't see, I saw a gun, I didn't see a ski mask. So, <laughs> look, we have a national crisis in Barbados. This plague of sargassum at a time when the NCC workers got sent home, when beautified Barbados closed down, when drainage workers got sent home. I want to know from the Minister of the Environment, what is the plan for dealing with this? A national crisis and the minister can send trucks out to pick up garbage, but not sargassum. What is the plan? Other countries are spending millions of dollars trying to deal with this plague of seaweed. The reality is if the tourism product in Barbados shuts down because it's sweet seaweed, God help us all. This is a national priority. Now, this is not a priority for law. In circumstances where the tourism industry was dealt a blow last year with the natural gas situation, where they're struggling to recover, this should be the number one priority for the Ministry of the Environment. Anybody going down Silver Sands, going down Enterprise, going down Maxwell, anywhere on the south coast, you can't use the beach. The turtles are dying, the fishermen can't fish, the boats can't go, people can't swim. And we have the resources to pick up garbage when the Sanitation Service Authority is on strike. Now, don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. I'm not begrudging the private people who took the job from Dennis Law. Equally, I would not begrudge them for picking up sargassum seaweed. But Law represents the worst, the worst of what this government has to offer. He gave jobs to people before elections and then sent them home. He's promising more jobs and he's not delivering. He's promising everything and he's not delivering. The workers in Barbados are getting little to nothing, while certain people in Barbados are pocketing all. Now, I want me to consider something. I believe we have to pull our resources from where we get them. And as much as I actually despise the man right now, we may want to consider Dennis Lowe for the Minister of the Environment, I mean for the Minister of, of Finance. Truthfully, think about it. A man did not have anything in 2008. His electricity got cut off down by his, his constituency office. He was bouncing checks left, right, and center. The marshals came to repossess his car, right? 
Well, I don't know about the house, but if you say so, I don't have to, I know I'm going to doubt you. The man had nothing in 2008. And I understand he has millions now. Millions. Where did he get it from? The man has to be a genius. Even Oil Arthur, who I consider the best minister of finance this country ever had, could not make millions from nothing. Understand, from debt to complete and total riches in seven years, he should be the minister of finance. Let him do for the people of Barbados what he's doing for himself. Well, then it's like all words for you. There is a time for everything. And one day there is going to be a reckoning. The old people say day does run until night catch it. Your time is coming. If his making a lot of money was the worst thing he did, I couldn't say nothing. But Dennis Law spearheaded and was at the center of the biggest scandal in Barbadian history. I don't know if you all understand the Cahill deal. Kerry will speak about it, but let me give it to you in a summary. Imagine the government of Barbados backed these people for a loan, gave them the land to put the plant, guaranteed their debt, put in the infrastructure, promised them they would give them all the feedstock to generate electricity, then promised them they would buy all the electricity back from them. Promised them they were paying no taxes, no VAT, no income tax, no, 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 nothing. They can bring in duty free vehicles. What is in it for the people and the government of Barbados? If I can't see it and you can't see it, then chances are it is nothing. So who is benefiting from this deal? Now, let me put this in perspective for y'all. Let me bring it up. When you start to talk about plasma and all that sort, people, people get people switch off. Imagine really, you wanted to do a farm. You wanted to, 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 to set up a farm really. And you come with me and I say, all right, really, I can give you the land. I can build the farmhouse. I can put in the water. I can pay for electricity. I can buy the seeds. I can provide the labor. And then when all is said and done, my brother, my good friend Indar is coming. Please come. Oh, Winnie. So imagine Winnie. 